Hi all, welcome back to Cara Battle for PNC Scenario 6, this is my part 35 um, Yeah, a uh, couple of things been on my mind Watching back some footage uh, Realised a couple of things um, Well, now this is back, oh, part 24 or 25, I think I was watching, so it's a good bit back. Um, now, there's nothing I can really do about this now. But it's when I found out about this, I wish this was sort of highlight, I think I spoke about this before. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's in the right place, it tells, it's in the damage part, it tells you about, but just the fact that it's the one thing that affects, sorry, it's the one thing that, um, a non-permanent hit or effect, you know, uh, for the Japanese. Um, all the other hits do absolutely nothing apart from this. And uh, I didn't notice this at first. And, um, well, if you consider that, in fact, it is, it is just now, isn't it? This here, which is just about to be destroyed, but when we hit this, we hit it with the full six hits. So it had six current hits on it, and its hit capacity is six. Well, that, going by that rule there, means that that ship was, um, that carrier was crippled. If all its hits, permanent and otherwise, total one or two less than, uh, well, in actual fact, that's not true, Grant. Because they don't total one or two less than the total, the exact number. <laughs> um, uh, but sure, the intention means they are that if it's got at least one or two less than that, I mean, it, if all its hats total. Wait, well, see, it's got six hits. If that totals one or two less than the hit capacity, well, it's kind of... No, it's not. It's totaling the total hit capacity. So, but surely that's not the intention. Surely it is intended even if it's over that, that means it's crippled. It's just I never took this into account when we first hit that ship. Um, and I also wouldn't have taken it into account when we crippled this carrier here um, the first time. And uh, that affects the crippled status effects because it, if it's crippled, it doesn't have any... It doesn't have any uh, air value, does it? Uh, carrier with heavy, heavy damage, no. Where's it, where's it talk about crippled then? Um, Japanese car can be has become when a Japanese carrier has become heavily damaged, its entire air value is lost to its force. So is that not what, what happens when it's crippled? Does that not do that as well? Am I getting muddled up here? Maybe it's possible. Uh, where's the where's the chart? US damage. Well, that, I mean that does say that's US damage. I mean, see, it does it does say. Well, mind you, that that's just talking about anti aircraft, isn't it? It says same as for US, same as for US. Well, that's crippled there. Crippled total hits one or two less than capacity for CVE, one less than capacity for CVL, seventy five percent of total hit capacity for yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure. This bit's kind of stumping me a little bit with the damage. And the other thing is, I'm not sure about, I mean, surely, surely, um, well, this is another thing I'm thinking. This is going to, it's the end of the turn, this is going to be destroyed, sunk. Then surely all these air points that are, on the air raid return track and in this turnaround track are going to be destroyed are going to be lost because there's no other there's no other carriers in this force it's just got a cruiser force 
So surely the air points are going to go away. I mean, I'm saying I'm not reading that anywhere, but is it? I mean, that is quite clear, is it not? <laughs> the carrier's been sunk. The aircraft that are on the carrier are, are surely destroyed, Grant. You know, it's um, I don't. I'm not seeing it written anywhere, but surely that's common sense. But I don't like common sense rules. I like it written in the rules. <laughs> um. And and there's there's talk about inoperative flight decks for the US and whatever, but well, the Japanese is a bit. I, I'm finding it a bit unclear to find out what happens, because the other the other thing is some of these ships are going to have. But then, as I'm assuming, as long as we've got one carrier that we can move things along here on the tracks, then that is all right. Um. Yeah, I'm kind of stumped by that crippled status now, though, because I kind of, I kind of thought that the crippled meant. All right, hang on, hang on. See, here's here's talking of crippled ships here. Sorry, is this maybe the bit that should be looked at? I thought this was just the US at first, but it's not. Uh, yeah, this is how it moves, and then crippled Japanese ships re use retirement movement. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's... No, I'm, I'm not sure here. Have I been thinking crippled is worse than it actually is? It doesn't, it doesn't tell you the effects of crippled there, so... Hmm. I'm sure I had this clear yesterday. Okay, I'm wanting to say I'm thinking along the, the wrong line here, and and uh, uh, the only thing that I crippled, if it's crippled, it just affects the ability for the ship to move. I don't think it's affecting its ability for air point in, its air value or anything like that. Hmm. Let's just have a quick search BGG for crippled, see what comes up. Okay, I did a wee look on BGG, and fortunately there is somebody went and asked, basically what I'm trying to ask, like, um, you know, if a, if a Japanese carrier is crippled, does it affect its air value, but, um, whatever. It doesn't, it just uh, affects its movement. Uh, and interestingly, this was mentioned also that within this, crippled Japanese units use retirement movement. Well, you'll see that's rule 19, which is meant to be an optional rule, but the designer did answer that, uh, reply to that question as well, and he said that, uh, that that shouldn't have been marked as optional and it should be used with us. Um, so if we do get in a position where we need to move this, then we'll need to look up that rule, which I haven't looked at. Um, so, yeah, I don't think... But it is still <laughs> quite interesting to think that this has got a full six points. It doesn't have one or two less than its hit capacity, so I'm not quite sure if it's classed as crippled or not. I think it'd be in... I think the intent is that it would be still crippled, but... So, anyway, right, what, let's just push on, because, um, yeah, I've not got that much time just now, and uh, I wanted to get a little bit in, but it was that that was bothering me a little. Um, and I put a couple of notes in the headers, because... Uh, I felt like that could probably have affected the... Uh, um, well, no, it wouldn't, would it, Grant? If, it, if we've just said crippled wouldn't affect its air value, so you wouldn't have had an issue. No. But I will need to keep an eye on, like I say, when that goes away, well, you've got to assume that these air points got, are lost. Um, and I'm not really sure, does that cruiser force still become still stays part of that butai because then you don't need a butai display does it just get does the butai marker go away and the cruiser force just get put onto the map maybe like that other one is in 4cl it's got a battleship in it uh not sure about that one either but um obviously you need some carrier you need a carrier to be able to have some air points <laughs> to admit, um so when it does go away we'll we'll see and uh, I mean, it's going to go away at the end of the next phase, which is going to be the end of the turn. So these air points aren't going to get anywhere. Okay, right. I'm just going to 
move on. We are uh, starting, just starting phase three. Um, we're going to move all air raids. Uh, I get the feeling there's none. There is none. There's no air raids out there. Um, so moving on, we're going to roll for mission movement and then draw... Uh, well, we're up to six chits now, aren't we? So let's roll for the third mission movement. That's a three. So that's going to be the mission movement for this phase. I'm going to draw six chits and see if anything... What's going to happen here? All right, Force B, Bravo. Um, where are you, Bravo? Right, he's up here. He's a small surface. So, because he's a surface, he's not going to launch a raid. He is going to lose that spotted status back down to uh, located. Um... Did we launch our... No, we've not. We've not launched our search this... We've not done our search this turn. Yeah, I think I was waiting on getting some aircraft up to be able to launch. I think I... What? I thought I had three. It looks like... Ah, oh, yeah, I do. I've actually got four available if I wanted them. Right, um... So that drops the located. And then we don't check for a raid because he's a surface ship. And uh, we just need to check his movement. He's going to move in the three direction, which is southeast. So down in here. Uh, that goes with him. So that's Force B dealt with. That's the first shit of this phase. Well, let's get the second one. I have Guam. Well, <laughs> I've now realised that Guam... I mean, in my eyes, it can't happen. It's got seven air units in the wasp box, and its air value is seven. Seven minus seven is zero, so there's no raid. And it's not. It's not going to happen. The rest of the the rest of the game. Again, it's one of the bits that feels like uh, are you getting something wrong there? Uh, that should be I. I won't. Is it? Is that part of the video stuff? I watched the. Uh, I went through my mum's on the train today, so I got. I watched about three parts of my videos, uh, so I got quite a bit done there. But I'm still like. About at least 26, and this is 35, so there's still quite a bit. Uh, and, uh, Yeah, and it might. Well, to be honest, the, my recording of this might die down a bit. I'm going to. I'm determined to complete this game. However, I have set up Didi at Tarawa on the mother table, so I'm uh, contemplating starting maybe doing that after I've had a wee... I thought I'll come back to this just now, just to just so I know where I'm at, and then... Uh, but I won't abandon this. I hope I don't, anyway. I'm saying that, but I, I, I don't want it. I want to come take it to the finish. So it would be a shame to, to not finish it off, so... Right, okay, that's the second chip drawn, and like I say, I don't, I don't think Lamb can come up with anything. And if you can't launch an area, it just becomes a no-op, so that's where I think we're at. Right, Butai 2, and that's right beside us here. So he's going to go from located to approximate site, and uh, let's just, what, which one is that? Well, Butai 2 is the one that's like... Yeah, got permanent... Well, sorry, got enough hits to sink it. It's this one here, isn't it? Um, so anyway, this is this is going to move along, however. And this is going to move along. I don't think that's going to matter because this ship's going to sink before they get a chance to move along again. And it wouldn't matter anyway because... Yeah, I, I dare say it could still launch an air raid... And then be sunk. And then when it came back, you would just have to eliminate the points, I think. I think that's that's okay. So we can still check for an air raid here. Um, that'll be nine hexes away. Yeah, it's nine hexes away. So I've moved all that. So we're nine hexes away. So if you're wanting to get the table out... Nine hex away. There's no modifiers here. I don't know. Like I say, 
if it, if it does launch a raid, it's not going to be with an awful lot, I don't think. But we'll see. We'll see. Right, that's an eight. So that's a yes. Um, so we've got an air value, haven't we? And it's it still has its air value in it. It's six, isn't it? Yeah, it's got an air value of six. Um, however, there's two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there's seven. We must have lost another one. Two, four, yeah. I think it must have once read before and we've destroyed it. So that's four, five, six, seven. Or was it the cat, maybe? And we, want, and we took one of them down. So it's got six air value and we've got seven... Um, seven lost and unavailable. Uh, so what chart am I looking for here? We're trying to generate a, an air strength. Yeah, but it's not that one. It's the, it's the other one, isn't it? Because it's the... Oh, come on. Yeah, it's this one. It's the one with the glam on it, isn't it? Because it's a level four fours. So... Uh, So current, yeah, unfortunately it's saying current air strength, I would like that to have said current air value, because that's what we're looking at now at the moment, it's not strength, it's value, so the value is 6, uh, so we, yeah, we still need to roll on this, but I think when we come down to the reduction chart, uh, now can I have a light damage, well again these are just previous hits, so none of us has taken effect yet, um, yeah so, Okay, we're rolling on the six column. Nine, so I think that's going to be a six. It is, so it's six, but then we come down here and we look in the six column and we've got seven uh, lost or unavailable, so it's, that's nothing. Yeah, it's a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. Okay. And that's uh, not going to move, so I'm going to put that away, and we're going to move on. Right, next is uh, we tie one, and where's he? Right, he's up there. He is located as well, so he's going to drop to uh, approximate. Say, and where was that? I thought there was some of them here. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to drop back to approximate sight. Um, oh, that's... Oh, well. Yeah, as long as... As long as we can reach him before he loses that. Because he that airstrike 5 is moving towards that. And then Butai 1 up here. So this is going to move into service in box number 2. I'll tell you what, though. That's going to give us a bonus once we strike that. Unless... It, uh, no, I can't move again, Grant. I can't move. That's it moved. So we're going to benefit from these points in this service inbox. Four of them. We're going to get a plus four to our dice rolls, I think. Right, so anyway, um, let's check if it's going to launch a raid. It's got a lot of lost points there, though, so I'm not so sure. Um, Butai 1, there'll be 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yeah, so it is 9, right, I've not got that chart right, but we know it's, it's no more the power, so, right, it's rolled a 4, so that's, that's just missing out, isn't it, and then he's not going to move, and we're going to put Butai 1 away, and that's going to be that, that's 4 chips down, 2 more to go, next one, Uh, it's Force T Tango. Um, he's up here. Looks quite close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's between the seven and nine. So no modifications to this as well. Needs a five to consider a possible raid. And does roll a five. So we're going to draw a level one check because he's a level zero force. 
and we get a surface, right? So that gets chopped back in. Nothing happens. He moves in the three direction, which is. Oh no, he's in this zone, Grant. Uh, three to ten. So it is southeast, yeah. So he moves in now. And that's Tango dealt with. Put him away. Uh, one more to go, is it? Yeah, that's five down, one to go. So we got yes subs, right. Um okay. Well D now is is this is where I need to find out if Delta has moved or not. So I need to look through the chats here, don't I? Yeah, he has. Ah right, I remember this one. So he moved Right, so force D Um yeah, he has moved in phase one. In phase one, the die roll was an eight. So him moving in an eight direction, he has moved from there to there. So that is that um, moving from the quarter. So we're going to get that oblique result if we do that. But I think we do. So I'm going to move in there and we're going to see if we can uh, contact. I think it's, it says it's, it's called contact anyway. But So... Somebody in contact table. So let's have a look at that. All right, so, and then we're gonna get that minus two modifier for a bleak approach. Right, and we need a, we need a five to 10, a five or greater result. Uh, the other modifiers don't apply. So with a minus two, oh, we're getting it. Seven minus two is five, so it is contact. So, well, same thing happens here. We draw a level one chip, don't we? Um, however, if this becomes a false contact, it will go away. Uh, 14.13. Just to make sure. Uh, contact succeeds, draw a level one chip. Right, so let's draw a level one chip. And it has a false contact. Right, well, at least that gets removed, the false contact, and the force gets removed as well. So, there is that. Uh, and that's a bit that was felt a little clear, unclear where it says it, but some of you might have realised that. I noticed when I watched, I think it was Dave's videos, he automatically just done that, removed the false contact, removed the force. So, he was switched on to how it should work. And, uh, just myself, I was like, uh, skip the rest of this procedure. Okay, that must mean I put that back and I leave the force and whatever. Alright, so moving on next, submarine is here and I thought we could go into Butai too, but that's the one that's got the carrier that's just about to be sunk. It's got that cruiser force with it, but I think my intention is probably to try and move towards C. So the likelihood is C moving 5 to 8. Yeah, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I suppose it, it could go northeast, but there is there is a chance it will go east. So I think I'll just move that sub into there with the hope that he moves in on top of us. Uh, so that's two of the subs. Um, stingray one. Let's just move that back, I guess. Uh, fin back, right? And we've got bang up there, right? So fin back can move into. Hmm, he's got a few options, doesn't he? Well, I need to know if the forces have moved. I want to say H has moved. I felt like it moved ac across. I think it was, yeah, I can see it on top. And that was in the second feet. So it rolled a six. Yeah, so H has moved from there to there. So that would be the stern approach if we moved into that. K. Mind you, you're not better going for... P has P moved. Um, P or well, I should be looking for K as well. I don't think either of them have moved. I'm just checking that first book again for K. Ah, K has actually. K moved in the first phase with a Nate. 
So he moved from here to here as well. So if we moved in there, that would be the oblique. But he's not moved. So let's let's go in and try on force P then. Because we're not going to get any modifiers for him. So we need a 5 or greater. And we fail. <laughs> uh, yeah, you only get that plus one if if the force is not moving, but that means, you know how all the butais are sitting, they won't move, that's what that means. Um, yeah, so okay, well, not, not to be them. Um, and then the last one is bang up there. Well, he's adjacent to butai 4, but... Um... A Butai 4 kind of moved. Well, it, it's one of the ones that won't move, eh? I don't know if there's any point in us moving in that one, that hex or not. So if we get contact, we could shadow it. It gives you a chance to increase your... There's nothing really else to go for, though, is there? Um... Yeah, there's not really. Sorry, I'm not showing you any of that. <laughs> I just realised the camera was pointing in the middle of the screen. Uh, there's bang there, and I'm talking about moving into Butai 4. You would get the plus one. We would get a plus one in the die roll for that, because the force is not moving. Um, I'm sure that's what that means. It hasn't moved this turn, though. We've not drawn its chit yet, so I'm not sure if you need to have drawn its chit to know that it wasn't moving. Nah, to be honest, that yeah, that might have to be the case. Because let's just say we move our task force, then that would move. So I think what we have what we need to have done is to have drawn Butai 4's chat, which we I don't think we've done because he's spotted still, so if we have I made a, maybe I made a mistake. No. No, we haven't. We've got Butai 3 two and one so we haven't drawn his chat yet but i think we would have to have drawn his chat to confirm that he wasn't moving so we probably wouldn't get that plus one uh well what about force g it's along here would we be better going for that maybe yeah Does it really matter, Grant? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna come along here. I don't I don't think there's much point me going and beside him. I might find out that that's I think they're better to try and actually contact the level zero forces because if I do it on the boot eye, it doesn't I don't get to do anything to it. If it was a level zero and it's not, I would draw a level one check to find out. Um, and we would well I suppose if it wasn't a false contact we we would place it on it and we would at least have something you know? because I think I could turn over a surface chip for instance then at least we know some information about it yeah okay I'll just move on there I think I think that's what we'll do so that's our, our US subs uh, dealt with well that was a 6-1 wasn't it yes indeed all right, so moving on. I can put that dice away. Uh, we've done all, done all that. None of that happening. So move air missions and then adjust fuel markers. So again, I'll do them in the order they are on the map. So air mission intercept one. Well, he's got seven fuel left. Um, I don't know. I'm expecting a raid coming from anywhere, really. I think I'll... I think I'll just move them back to the R, adjacent to the task force, rather than leaving them certain. And uh, that's 36 fuel. 
Right, airstrike mission two. Uh, he's heading back to the task force. He's not far away, but uh, so he's going to move, and uh, he's down to three fuel though. Um, and then airstrike mission three is on four fuel, so I'm assuming he's on his way back as well. Where is he? Oh yeah, he's he's just carried out his strike, and he's only on. He's got four fuel left, so he's in trouble. So he moves back one, and we spend one fuel down to three for him. There's no air mission four, air mission five. Looks like, oh no, he's still going out. Yeah, he's, uh, no, he's not gonna hit. He's gonna move here for one, so he's one away. So as long as, no, no, but I one's moves, Grant. So he's five, spent one fuel, he's down to six. And then number six, who's on two fuel, is coming back. And yeah, this is where I need to, I need to try and help these guys out, don't I? He's down to one fuel. So critical zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then one critical six. So he's gonna be in the same state as the other ones that came back. Have we had the US move yet? I'm going to move it this turn. To be honest, even if I move it, because what's he on? He's on three fuel. So two, one, and if we did move that one, two, one, critical zero, critical one, and then one, critical two. So that, even moving it in that hex and just leaving that, you know, not splitting the task force. But I think Stuart was probably right. I should probably just split it in half. I'm not sure what happens regarding the battle line. Does the battle line have to be... I mean, uh, you know, I guess if you split, you've got five dis different task groups. You've got 58.1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. So I guess whatever, I mean, like I said, I think I would do maybe split. Take 1 and 3 away. So I'd put their counters out and put task force 1 and 3 in here. And then this would still comprise of 2, 4, and 7, I'm assuming. So that would mean the battle line was in there. So if we got attacked in here, we wouldn't have a battle line, you know. But, I mean, are we getting attacked? Is it going to happen? I don't think so. Right. Uh, that's all our um, stuff moved. Yeah. That's everything moved. Fuel markers done. Um I'm going to leave the, I think there was a reason I wanted to leave it. I'm, I'm as well just leaving it to the last phase now, I think. Oh no, was it to get these aircraft up ready to launch? It might have been. Well, they are ready to launch now. I think I'll just leave it to the last phase. Um, yeah, because, yeah. I think so. I mean, we're only one. We're only landing one aircraft, so it's not that I need to cycle that through quickly or anything like that. So no, I'm not bothered. I'll leave it to the last phase. So we come down to air operations, uh, launch. Well, I don't think we're going to launch. Um. Yeah, you do have spaces now, Grant. You've got three spaces. I mean, uh, I could launch another strike, but I'd be using these guys that I'm going to send out to spawn planes. So I don't think I should do that. So I'm not going to launch. Race service into ready. Um, no, that's the only one that, but I couldn't, I can't move that anyway. Hangar 2 from service in. Uh, well, no, did I not want to just leave them in the hangar just now? Because uh, once we get some bomber, wait, um, attack aircraft back, I want to be able to get them through up the top, because I, I don't see myself launching any, and I said mission, so we've got enough fighters up there, but we need some attack planes to create a strike, so I don't think I'm doing that, lower flight deck to hangar, and uh, now here we go, so here's one guy that can come up, um, and here's one guy that can come up. Problem is, ah, well, I'm going to launch him as a spawn point next turn. That's fine. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm as well putting him in the hangar, for sure. And then these bunch, well, these two, yeah, because that's straight stuff. And yeah, I should still put them in the hangar anyway. But as a hangar, you can have, like I say, that's when you can have your maximum capacity of eight for a CV or, well, I would say eight, eight in total, but they could they could all be in the hangar, is what I'm meaning. Um, yeah, and then land, uh, no, we're not going to land. Air to air combat, there's none. Um, no. No. And then no Japanese air attack segment. No US air attack segment. We will get one next turn. Because we've got air strike five up there. I'm going to go on Butai one. And he's the only one outgoing, isn't it? The rest are all coming home. So, uh, yeah. So not this turn. Uh, clear inoperative flight decks, clear deck crashes, advance phase marker. So we're on to phase four this time. So we will be doing our um, search this time. And we're back to move all air raids, which there's none off again. Um, okay. Right, I think I'm going to just stop there for now. Because um, I, I did want to come up tonight and try and kick off uh, Didi at Tarawa as well. So I might have a go at that. I was going to just record the setup as well. I, started, I thought I'll set it up and then I thought, well, I might, might as well go through the setup. Cause there's, there's two or three little fiddly, but I don't actually, there's probably not. It's probably straightforward, to be honest. But Anyway, um, that's not what we're looking at here. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay, well, it's still going. Like I say, I'm going to finish this. I'm definitely going to finish it. I'm not going to bail out on it, even though that a few things have died down a bit and whatever. And then... Um, yeah, it's, I, I guess, I think this is just how the game's meant to go. I think so. i uh, be interested to know anybody's comments on that. And if, for some reason, I've... Well, obviously, I want to know if I've done things wrong. But, um, you know, strategy... Or maybe I've got really lucky with things. Or maybe my strategy's really good. <laughs> I, can't say, I can't see that being the right thing. I, mean, I I did say we still had we did have a worry about this force getting off and was it force R up there but I don't think they can I think this one well actually did they not work out this one could make it as well so I don't think he's moved yet one two three four five that's five turns one two three no see he can't make it oh is it Bravo Bravo can one two three so he can get in there and then Alpha I think can as well one two three four yeah because we've got one, two, three. We've got four turns left. So him and him could get out. And that is that is pretty devastating if I, if I remember the points. Well, actually, there you go. I just flipped the page there to it. So, um, however, I mean, Force A is just a level zero force right now. So my guess is it's got to become something before it can leave. I don't know how we work that one out. And then Force Bravo is a small surface at the moment. Note that there is a victory point award for Japanese air points actually destroyed in combat, but no separate award for remaining air points that might have been on board a sunken carrier. All right, so we get points for them per five Japanese air points, land or naval, in lost boxes. We get one point, what is that, A for? Scenario nine, yeah, okay. So you get one point for each five points. So to be honest, I've got quite a few points there as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, yeah, you know what, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't foresee us losing a, Carrier, for instance, and that would be the... But that one, it, each Japanese carrier exits the map, but I don't know how that Force A can become a carrier. Because <laughs> it's just the Force... It's just a level zero force, so... I don't I don't know. Uh, 
I don't even know if it can we if it can leave the map. Actually, uh, you know what? It's saying there that it's not in that dark area. It needs to actually exit the map from that dark area, from the invasion zone, to benefit from these. So, I don't think Forsy can do that then. Bravo might be able to. One, two, three, four. No, he can't. One, two, three, four. So, I, I don't think these can get off the map. And I think he's got to go into that dark area before he exits the map. I don't think he can go one, two, three. Because I don't think that does not It needs to exit the map from the invasion zone. Okay. Right, anyway, like I say, I will I will be completing it. I won't just be abandoning yeah. it. Um, my recordings of it might die down a little now if I go and start uh, Tarawa. Um, but um, there's plenty. This is, like I say, part 35, and I've only got released part 26, so I need to watch them back to see anyway. So, Okay, I'll cut this as a short part then, and uh, we'll come back next time with phase four start and and uh yeah see how things go okay cheers